All right, 2011, Party Rock Anthem was number two in the Billboard charts. I was a senior in high school, and this was the computer I built. This thing was awesome back in the day. It originally had a Sandy Bridge i7 2700K, 128 gigabytes solid state featuring the new SATA 6 gigabits per second connection, 8 gigs DDR3 memory, a two terabyte hard drive, and a Radeon HD 4850. But now, it's 2017. This has been my daily driver for almost six years, and it's not easy getting a computer to survive high school, undergrad, and most of my grad studies in college. So it's time for an upgrade! <laughs> First, I'm going to reuse the graphics card and the Wi-Fi card out of my old computer since they both have been recently upgraded. I'm also going to reuse the Blu-ray drive. But one of the problems with this case is that it takes a lot of screws to open it up. Also, the motherboard is attached to the back plate for some reason. This makes removing parts really difficult. <laughs> Moving on to the new computer, I now need to screw in the radiator for the CPU liquid cooling. I'll be using the Corsair H100i version 2. Now let's add in the processor. For this, I chose the Intel i7 KB Lake 7700K. Now I need to figure out how to add the mounting bracket to the back of the motherboard. Well, the bracket is finally on and I can screw the motherboard in place. Finally, I can add the cooling pad on top of the processor. Oh, look at that, I already messed up. Turns out, the fans on the radiator are facing the wrong way. They would be bringing hot air into the case instead of pushing it out. So I gotta remove the radiator and remount the fans. With that fixed, I now need to wire the case to the motherboard. These are things like the power button, front USB ports, and audio jacks. Doing a little cable management on the back. Now let's add the power supply. No off-brand units for this build, I'm going with a 650 watt modular power supply from Corsair. RAM time, for this I'll be using 16 gigs of DDR4 memory overclocked to 3200 MHz. Now this piece has me the most excited. This is a 500 gigabyte M.2 NVMe drive. Normal solid state drives have a max read speed of around 550 megabits per second, but this uses PCI Express, so I can get read speeds up to 3200 megabits per second. That's crazy. So on to the extra peripherals. I'll be adding the TP-Link Wi-Fi card and the Radeon RX 480. I love all the screwless parts for this case. Here are two 4 terabyte Western Digital hard drives in RAID 1 configuration. Now for Blu-ray drive, it was difficult finding a micro ATX case with five and a quarter inch drive bays, but I did it. Plugging in all of the SATA 3 cables for the optical and hard disk drives. And look at that, I messed up again. Turns out the graphics card is in a PCI x8 slot instead of a x16. Easy fix, I just removed both PCI Express cards and swapped the ports. Now to add the power to the graphics card and seal everything up. That's the installation ID. And there we have it, my finished desktop computer. Will it hold up to the same use and abuse as my previous system? I guess there's only one way to find out. Regardless, I had a ton of fun building this, and I'm sure I'll get many years of good use out of it. Alright, now to really put it to the test. Well, I'm almost done rendering it at 90%. You can see over here with the CPU, I have a light overclock going. Um, 
it's normally 4.2 gigahertz. I have it at 4.6. Uh, oh, it must be almost done with all of its rendering processes because it stopped hitting 100%. Uh, and my memory's going down too. I was I was using almost uh, 12 gigs, a little bit more than that actually. And I'm amazed, like I'm just now hitting 30C. Uh, my other computer would have been so hot. So good work all around, computer. I'm very happy with what I see. I think this will be a good fit.